In this chapter, we will fly a multi-leg westbound flight from Boston, Massachusetts, KBOS, to Allentown, Pennsylvania, KABE. Here is how to set up the Microsoft Flight Planner to create GPS flight plans. The easiest place to open Flight Planner is on the Free Flight page. You can also open it from the Flight tab. Before you do anything though, change your aircraft to the one you expect to fly. Flight Planner uses aircraft information for the navigation log. Then click the Flight Planner button. This is the opening page of the Flight Planner. Begin by clicking the Create tab. Then, click the Clear button. Next, select the Departure Airport and Runway. Then we select our Destination Airport. Our flight will be VFR. And our routing will be VOR to VOR. Click the Find Route button, and Flight Planner will compute our route. And here are the results. Flight Planner developed a variety of information. A map showing the computed flight route. The waypoint list. a suggested cruising altitude which provides terrain clearance, the navigation log which one can print. The navigation log is a very valuable resource. With its detailed information for each leg, pilots would do well to have it near to hand while flying. The flight is summarized in the upper left-hand corner of the navigation log, including fuel consumption. Hence the need to load the aircraft for your flight before creating the flight plan. When you want to return to this flight plan later, open Flight Planner again. Click on the Load button and select your flight plan. Your fully filled in flight plan form will pop up. There is now a Navlog button available to view or print the flight details. If you wish to view the map again showing your route or the waypoint list, click the Edit tab. Now we'll examine our KBOS to KABE flight plan to see if it is OK. Begin your review by examining the waypoint list. Notice that the airport and the first waypoint VOR have the same name. That usually means that the VOR is on the field, or very close by, not a useful location for the initial waypoint. Let's check the nav log to find out. Yes, there we see it. The BOS VOR is only two tenths of a nautical mile from the airport. We can more closely examine any waypoint on the map by clicking on its name on the waypoint list. The map zooms in to the waypoint and centers it on the map. We can further zoom in as needed. We'll delete this nuisance waypoint by clicking the Delete Waypoint button below the waypoint list. The route map has automatically been updated to reflect the deletion of the BOS waypoint and the nav log has also been automatically updated. While we're optimizing this GPS flight plan, how many noticed the great length of the first leg? Or perhaps that was apparent in the nav log? The GPS doesn't care the distance to the VOR. 
it tracks to the location of the VOR, to its latitude and longitude coordinates. But if the GPS fails, we must fall back to VOR navigation. VOR range is limited to the line of sight distance. At 4,500 feet, that's about 67 nautical miles. At 6,500 feet, VOR range increases to about 80 nautical miles. Let's plan 6,500 feet and add three VORs to the flight path, PUT, HFD, and CMK. Do that by dragging the red route line on the map to those VORs. That adds them to both the waypoint list and to the nav log. The longest distance between VORs is now 51 nautical miles, a nice safety margin. Click the arrows next to the cruising altitude to increase it to 6,500 feet. Now that we have safe VOR navigation ranges, let's check for possible collisions with controlled airspace. Turn on the controlled airspace icon to do this. You will have to zoom in some to see the controlled airspace contours. Solid blue contour lines identify Class B Bravo airspace, which can top out at up to 10,000 feet MSL. The four concentric rings designate the four layers of its profile. Only big city airports have Class B airspace. Here is the inverted wedding cake profile of the KMSP Class B airspace. It tops out at 10,000 feet MSL, which is noted on the sectional chart. Rarely is Class B airspace nice and symmetrical as just shown. Take, for example, the Class B airspace at St. Louis, Missouri. Solid magenta contour lines identify Class C Charlie airspace, which surrounds airports at mid-sized cities. They uniformly top out at 4,000 feet above the surface. Dashed dark blue contour lines identify Class D Delta airspace. This airspace uniformly tops out at 2,500 feet above the surface. Class E Echo applies only to IFR flights. Now we'll check our route from Boston westward, noting that we first pass through a dashed magenta airspace, Class E, but that is no concern in VFR. Next are two airports with Class D airspace, dashed blue contours. We know Class D tops out at 2,500 feet above the surface, so we will quickly hover our mouse over each of the two airports inside the Class D airspaces to determine the highest field elevation. Then we'll add that to 2,500 feet for the highest Class D airspace elevation MSL. In this case, it's 800 feet plus 2,500 or 3,300 feet. Cruising at 6,500 feet, we will have no problem. Here, the Blairstown Airport airspace is Class E Echo also, and so is no problem. But we will zigzag a bit to stay safely out of their way, since we are descending. There you go. We've added one waypoint, BWZ VOR, and deleted two VORs, STW and FJC, for a better approach into KABB. Here's the revised GPS flight plan with the new waypoint list. The navlog is also completely updated. That was a lot of information on the flight planner, but it is the foundation to create, review, and edit GPS flight plans. While we hold for takeoff clearance on runway 27, let's quickly review our Boston to Allentown GPS flight plan. Since we haven't started the flight yet, only some of the information here is valid. Here we have an entry in the from position on the GPS navigation page, where there was none in the direct single leg flight plans. Since we have not yet begun the flight, the ETA time shown is the local present time. The Putnam VOR is correctly shown as our first waypoint. The desired track to Putnam is 254 degrees magnetic. And the distance from KBOS to Putnam is 45 nautical miles. That's enough book learning. Let's get into the air.
Here we are but a few minutes into our flight. Our low ground speed indicates that we are still climbing to our 6,500 feet cruising altitude. The only information that differs from what you saw in the direct single leg flights is the KBOS entry in the From 2 section along the bottom of the screen. Our aircraft is flying along the magenta colored course line, the active leg. A white course line, such as that shown in front of us, is an inactive course line. The Providence Rhode Island Airport, with its Class C airspace, is off to our left. Note our 145 knot ground speed. We have quite a strong headwind. In a no wind situation, the ground speed for our DC-3, when at 6,500 feet, would be about 159 knots. Our desired track is 253 degrees magnetic, and yet our course to steer is 257 degrees magnetic. The four degree difference to the right is our wind correction angle. The active flight plan page is a great feature of the GPS. Turn it on and off by toggling the flight plan button at the bottom of your GPS. Included on this page is the entire flight plan with magnetic course for each leg and the remaining distance to go for each active leg. The cumulative total distance also changes as the flight progresses. A bad Microsoft oversight. Their GPS 500 does not provide a destination ETA. GPS snapshots of the flight follow. The drifting gyro compass causes this cross-track error. Tap the keyboard letter D, David, every few minutes to reset your gyro compass if it has this problem. Track your flight in the map view if you wish. The GPS still brings us to the airport, not to a runway.